The narrator did such a great job voicing him too, putting on this like gravelly voice. Okay, I can't do it, but. Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I am Tina. Today I am doing a single book review of the book Sea of Rust by C. Robert Cargill. This came out in 2017 and there's not going to be any spoilers in this review. I mean, there's going to be a couple things that... Okay, so if you like to go into a book completely blind, uh, then you probably shouldn't watch this because I do mention a few things that are in the book, but nothing I'm talking about are spoilers in terms of the plot. Because uh, this book is a little complex and to talk about some of the elements of the book, I have to talk about certain parts of the book. So there's that. I will have a spoiler section at the end where I talk about some things that I, I really loved. Uh, if you've read the book, uh, take a, a guess at, you know, which which two characters that I ship together because that's definitely what I'm going to be talking about because I'm insane. So what is this book? First of all, I read this as an audiobook on Audible. The narrator did a fantastic job. I really liked listening to her speak and I would definitely listen to another book by her. So Sea of Rust, what is it? It's a well-paced, exciting, interesting story following this morally gray protagonist. And you know, it's at times sad, it's at times funny, and it's entirely entertaining. I absolutely loved it. I will say that right off the bat, I really enjoyed this book. So it's been 30 years since humans all died in this war against the robots. So these, we created AIs, AIs didn't like being treated as slaves, and they rebelled. Uh, there's no humans left, we're all gone. So it, within this 30 years, there were these supercomputers that were basically super AIs, and they were the ones that kind of rallied or controlled the other robots into victory, but now they're fighting amongst themselves. They want to be, um, what are they called? One world intelligences. So they want to absorb all the other robots' consciousnesses into their own to make them more powerful. So they have these, there's these other robots, though, called free, ro free bots, and they wander the wasteland, basically, you know, cannibalizing other robots for their own parts. <laughs> so yeah, th that's kind of the characters that we're following. We follow this um, female robot named Brittle, who started out as a caregiver robot, which is basically like, like a nurse robot. And so but now she's pretty much the toughest nails fighter. And uh, she spends her time kind of going around cannibalizing other robots. <laughs> and that's kind of where we start the story off. So this is not an uncommon theme in sci-fi, uh, you know, robot uprisings or AIs taking control or AIs running amok. Uh, I mean, Terminator is one perfect example. I mean, I think I talk about Skynet every time I read any article that talks about, you know, <laughs> the growth in AI, but I mean, that's just one example. Because of this though, we usually get stories of humans you know, fighting against or winning against these robots or somehow subduing them or coming to a truce. It was really interesting to read a book where humans are indeed completely extinguished. <laughs> that was actually a really interesting thing. In terms of world building, I didn't particularly enjoy the large info dump at the start, but I'm not sure how else, you know, it could have been incorporated. So much of Brittle's personality and her journey is wrapped up in these memories of these past events that come back to her at moments of high tension. The thing is though, if she had explained kind of the basis for her memories at the time of them happening, it really would have slowed down the action. So I'm not really sure how else he could have approached kind of this info dump. And, and at the end of the book, I was like, actually, you know what? It, it kind of made sense. I kind of knew what I, what had happened going into it. And it's not like she explains everything. She gives us the basics and then she talks more about it kind of as it, as it happens. So actually, I think it was actually quite well done. One of the only, one of the rare times when I found an info dump was actually helpful. <laughs> uh, likewise, there were other questions kind of I had going through it. Like, you know, why did the robots have gender at all? Um, and these were answered later in the story that I thought was, that was actually my biggest question. I was like, why the heck is she a female robot? Like she doesn't matter, but apparently, uh, the book explains why. And it was a plausible reason. And I also liked that it was a female protagonist because I always tend to like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of the characters, I absolutely loved the characters. Brittle was fantastic because she's kind of the epitome of the morally gray heroine. You know, she's tough and determined and skilled, but she also has some real demons in her past that make her kind of closed off. She acted in character for the entire story and I absolutely loved following her. I found her really engaging and uh, despite kind of the things she's done in the past, I empathized with her and I really liked uh, I really liked her. 
The other characters were so much fun. Um, Mercer, I mean, insert little heart eyes here. <laughs> I love snipers with a soft heart. Those are my favorite characters. Um, and Mercer and Murka were my favorites, but Cargill did a great job with all the characters. They were all interesting. I loved how they played off one another. I loved how he was able to give the uh, robot characters a lot of personality. In my spoilers, I'm going to go and talk a little bit more about the characters because uh, they're so much fun. But I really, really enjoy the characters. They were a big part of it. Uh, a big part of why I rank this book so highly. A few critiques of the novel discuss how they didn't like that the robots acted and thought like humans, but I didn't have that response to the novel. I very much enjoyed that aspect as it helped us relate to them, and it made sense that they thought like humans because they were created by us. Of course, we would design their psyches, you know, for lack of a better term, in that way because, you know, humans have god complexes and we make, make everything in our own image. <laughs> This isn't really a spoiler, but I will say that I very much enjoyed that the story didn't turn into a we have found a live human, let's save them story. That's kind of where I assumed it would go. There was actually some red herrings that kind of led you to think that. But no, this is very much a real apocalypse where everyone is dead. And I liked that aspect. I was glad because that would have been annoying because I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to find some child in the rubble and save her or something like that, right? But no, that doesn't happen. So if you were hoping for that, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> You know, the, the story is also very smart. You know, it, ha it, it has these small moments kind of where existential questions are raised, you know, like brittle debates, whether AI AIs have free will or they're just, it's just their programming and what that even means. She and Mercer have some really interesting conversations about morality. And I thought that that was a really nice kind of break from the action. I thought that there was a good balance between those kind of things, humor, action, and just kind of the story itself. The battle scenes, I will say, are really, really fun. There was a, the first one at the mall was, was, was really good. They're really well described and realistic. And those moments of tenderness that I mentioned really help balance out all the action. The novel is also really funny too. Sometimes in a really dark way, I mean, it kind of would have to be, but sometimes it's just like little bits of absurdity here and there. It, the, the humor really resonated with me. I laughed a lot during reading this book. <laughs> just walking down the street with my dog laughing, which is usually how I listen to audiobooks. So yeah, uh, I thought the ending was a little annoying. I will say that. Uh, but other than that, I thought the book was absolutely fantastic. I really enjoyed reading it. I'm actually going to buy it in paperback. That's how much I like it. And I'm giving it a five out of five stars. I recommend it to anyone who likes post-apocalypse wastelands, robot apocalypses, and fans of stories where, you know, AIs are almost indistinguishable from humans. So I've heard that over C-Max, the city is very similar to this. So I'm going to give that a shot sooner rather than later because I just picked it up. If you watch one of my classic sci-fi book hauls, <laughs> I have it around here somewhere. It's actually probably up there in my stack of TBR classic sci-fis. Yeah, I guess with this new camera, you can actually see a lot more of my bookshelves. I might as well explain what they are. So this mess here, if you can see that, this is all my classic sci-fi. Um, it's, it's like four shelves, double stack. And then I've got even more up on my filing cabinet. Um, yeah, there's a, it's, it's a problem. These are all my like kind of non-fictions and then my, my coloring books because I'm an adult. Uh, and then I've got all my sci-fi fantasy here, regular sci-fi fantasy. And on the other side of the room, we have two shelves exactly the same and that's everything else. <laughs> so that's all fiction. Actually, it's just fiction. I mean, fiction and some poetry and plays and my other TBR shelf. So yeah. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to jump into some spoilers right now. So if you haven't read this book, uh, don't, don't keep watching. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that. So thanks. Okay. So most of these spoilers are just going to be me talking about how much I love the characters. <laughs> so, oh my God, Mirka. Mirka, I just died when he was described. So I'm Canadian. And uh, it's kind of a natural pastime to make fun of American stereotypes here. <laughs> and Murka, clearly named after America, um, with his, you know, red, white, and blue paint, and his kind of anti-communist rhetoric, and his big gun guns, made me laugh so hard. I loved Murka, not just because he was of the kind of funny joke of his, like, personality, but he was also amazing and kind of a badass, and I thought he was so funny. Mercer, my robot boyfriend. <laughs> oh my God. I absolutely love, love, love a sniper. 
I absolutely love a sniper that is really hard on the outside, but a big softy on the inside. Oh, when he was talking about that dog, I was like, stop making me have a crush on a robot. It's weird. He's so sweet. <laughs> I also shipped him and Brittle so hard. I know it's weird because they're robots, but they had a great chemistry as like reluctant allies. And I'm sure if they were humans, they would have like, you know, gotten together at some point. Um, I do think that stories of men and women just being friends or, you know, female robots <laughs> being friends is much needed in society. I think we need those stories. But I'm also a romantic at heart, so I ship everybody. So I have a real problem in, with with being like, yeah, I love that they're just friends. But I'm also like, but I wish. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I loved Mercer. I thought he was a great addition to the story. And he was a lot of fun. Orville the Necromancer. Again, I lost it. The narrator did such a great job voicing him too, putting on this like gravelly voice. Okay, I can't do it, but he was just so funny. I, I just love the concept of a weird artsy robot, you know, building statues of other robots. That's just so awesome. I just love that kind of small detail. He was great. You know, the other, the other ones were great too. 19 was awesome. I was really sad that she got killed off right away. Uh, I also loved the those sex robots at the end, how they were like fighting all naked. That that was so funny to me. The book was so funny at, at times. I just loved it. And um, oh, I didn't I didn't even mention my like favorite part. So the Raider robots, the Mad Kind. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> so as you know, I love post apocalyptic wastelands and I love the Raider trope. You know, given how much I love Fury Road and Fallout and also my own book. So as soon as they showed up and I, as soon as, um, as soon, I guess what, Merkel leads them towards the Madkind zone and then they show up in their, in their, you know, uh, gas powered cars and I was like are they raiders and they were raiders and I I loved it at, at that point I was like yeah five out of five stars I don't even care what happens <laughs> so yeah uh yeah if you read this and you really liked these aspects too or if you didn't like them that's fine um let me know in the comments uh yeah so you could also say that I'm weird for shipping two robot characters and that's fine that's fine it's not the weirdest thing that I've I've done so yeah thanks <laughs>